with Tower of Fantasy's global release finally here, you will want to know these tips and tricks when starting the game for the first time. Welcome everybody, my name is Howard Sam, and today I will be giving you a beginner's guide to a waifu fantasy, wait, I mean a beginner's guide to Tower of Fantasy. Oh my gosh, that was cringe. Before I start, I want to say that I will be streaming Tower Fantasy on twitch.tv forward slash Hydrosam. Give it a follow so that way you can know when I'm live and more importantly, so you can get rewards while watching me because I will have drops on my channel. Anyways, the main thing about this game are the character slash weapons. I say slash because they are the same thing. Quickly, I want to say that my channel and knowledge primarily comes from Genshin Impact, so I will be making references from that game to hopefully make it easier to understand. So in Genshin Impact, characters and weapons are separate. But in Tower of Fantasy, they are the same thing. The backstory and easiest way for me to explain it is that from an online database, kind of like a cloud or something, once your character acquires a weapon, they download the combat data and style of the best character to ever wield that weapon. So that's why people refer to these weapons by names of characters instead of the weapon itself. You also have the option of putting on a skin or more accurately activating the similar of that character, but it is not necessary. If you are someone who enjoys female characters over male characters or vice versa, don't be sad if you pull a character like King, because at the end of the day, you can just use your own custom character instead of using the skin of King. The main thing is figuring out what weapon and playstyle you enjoy the most in the game. You have access to three weapon slots and can switch between them. Now talking about more of the weapons, each of them do have their own element, and those elements are Volt, Ice, Fire, and Physical but their interactions are not as important as it is in Genshin Impact. What's more important is that there's three types of weapons and those are defense, DPS, and support. Defense weapons are generally your heavier weapons and they're pretty good at breaking shields. DPS is your damage focused weapons, of course. Supports are your healers, buffers, and shielders. Combining weapon types gives you a resonance just like combining elements in Genshin Impact. Having a balanced resonance increases your final damage and damage reduction by 5%. Your shatter and your healing effect increase by 20% and when in team play, your final damage and damage reduction is increased by an additional 20%. When you have two defense weapons equipped, you get the Fortitude Resonance, which increases your damage reduction by 25%, your Shadow by 60%, and Aggro by 800%. When you're in team play, your damage reduction is increased by an additional 20%. When you have the Attack Resonance, this is when you have two DPS weapons, your final damage is increased by 10%, and it's further increased in team play by 40%. When you have the Benediction Resonance, which means you have two support weapons, your healing is increased by 100%, and when in team play, your healing is further increased increased by 100%. The team play comes into handy whenever you want to be like a defense main and a DPS main or support main. Elemental resonance is character dependent. For example, the first global limited banner is Nemesis. When she's combined with another Volt character, she will give extra damage to Volt characters. So if you want to be an elemental main like Volt, Ice, or you're dead set on physical or something, save for those future characters that will have those resonance. In the Chinese server, not global, right now in the Chinese server because we don't know how it's going to be in global, but in the Chinese server, there's characters like Lyra, who have a physical resonance, Ruby, who have a fire resonance, and Sakifua, who has an ice resonance. That may change when on global, because right now I'm recording this before global, but whatever those characters are, go ahead and save for those if you want to be an elemental main. So once you do have your weapons equipped, you will notice that there's different types of attacks. You have your normal attacks, your charge attacks, and your dodge slash dash attacks while on the ground. Once you jump in the air, your normal attacks change. You also have the ability to do plunging attacks, and generally these attacks are stronger, which is why you will notice that these attacks consume stamina when in the air. And you also notice that this is separate from your dodging stamina bar. Each weapon has their own skill that has a cooldown upon activating. This can be compared to your elemental skill in Genshin Impact. During combat, you will notice a white bar building around your weapons. Once it reaches the end, your weapons will be flashing, unlocking their discharge ability, and you can activate this ability by switching to your weapon. This ability can be compared to your ultimate ability in Genshin Impact because it can have have an animation and what i want to tell you right now is especially if you have a genshin impact background there are no iframes during the animation of this discharge ability during combat you only have iframes when you're dodging but i just want to stress that really quick if you do manage to do a perfect dodge you will activate a kind of time fracture ability it's called fantasia but this may change whenever global launches but the point is you do a perfect dodge you're going to create like a time fracture time stop 
your enemies will slow down. This will instantly give you a weapon discharge ability. And with your enemies slowed down, you can take advantage of them, use your ability, do whatever you gotta do, maybe change position. It's all up to you. And it's a pretty huge part of combat. What I also want to tell you is that enemies have shields. Well, actually, small enemies do not have shields, but many bosses and all the enemies above that tier, they do have shields. And taking down their shield is gonna be kind of a huge part of you fighting these enemies. And this is where equipping the right weapon in the right scenario comes in. For example, a simple a short scenario is that I see a shield, I will switch to my defense weapon and demolish the shield, then I will switch to my DPS weapon and finish them off. And that's the simplest way I can just uh, kind of show you combat. I hope that covers the basics of combat and weapons, but if you do have any more questions, you can ask me while I'm live on Twitch or join the Discord link in the description. Now let's go ahead and talk about gear and upgrading in Tower Fantasy. In Tower Fantasy, you can upgrade your weapons with these materials. You get elemental stones from farming them in open world, and they do give you some as you progress in the game. The other two materials can also be acquired by progressing to the game, but you may also farm them by using your stamina. And speaking of stamina, this right here is your stamina system and it will be unlocked after shutting down the first Omnium Tower in the story. Just like Genshin Impact, you can use your stamina for gold, upgrade materials, and group operations for matrices, or in Genshin terms, artifact grinding. These matrices they can farm for or gotcha for will be equipped to your weapons. There are 4 slots for every weapon to be equipped and each matrices set has their own 2 piece bonus and 4 piece set bonus. So just like Genshin you can mix and match or get a full set for your weapons. And just like artifacts in Genshin you upgrade your matrices with other matrices. Try not to invest into your early matrices as you'll probably need resources for when you get SSR matrices. Also, each character slash weapon has passives that can be unlocked via gifting them items that you acquired throughout the game. Some of these passives can be crucial to your gameplay, so make sure you read what gifts will give you more points for your character, and that way you can know who to allocate your resources to. In Tower of Fantasy, you also have something called a suppressor. What is it? Well, the best way to describe it is just something you upgrade and just get flat stats from it for your character. There's like no reason not to upgrade this and as you complete each level it does give you a matrixy so that's a good thing. The last thing I want to talk about is that the gear you will acquire for your character. Since this is just a beginner's guide I just want to say put on what you have but don't upgrade your early gear. But do be sure to upgrade the gear slot level because that will never go away and the level will always stay with that slot. Now let's talk about exploration tips and tricks. In Tower of Fantasy, you have a stamina bar and a dodge stamina bar as I mentioned earlier. Your stamina bar only gets consumed when you're climbing or floating around in a jetpack, aside from the combat that I told you earlier. This means that you have unlimited sprint in order to explore the area. And also, once you progress enough into the story, you will unlock vehicles and that will help you get around even faster. And in this game, you have two jumps. One from jumping off the ground and a double jump which is a jump while mid-air. Kind of like Smash Bros if you've ever played Super Smash Bros in your life. And because of this double jump mechanic, it will allow you to have an easier time climbing. What I mean by this is instead of using your stamina to climb, what you do is detach yourself, jump, double jump, and then latch on again. On PC, it's control, space space, and then W so you can go forward and latch on. And whatever the controls will be on mobile, then you just do the same thing. This is going to be very useful because it's going to help you climb very high places without consuming stamina. Once you do reach those high places, another tip that will help your horizontal travel is that once you're high enough, jump off, do a dash, activate your jetpack, do a dash again, and repeat until you're out of dashes. And even when you do run out of dashes, they do replenish as soon as you use one or while you're floating horizontally with your jetpack. This is useful because this is definitely faster than just running on the ground. And the last tip I want to share with you about exploring is that if you can, Google Tower of Fantasy Interactive Map. This will help you find nucleuses faster, treasure chests, and viewpoints. It's going to help you tremendously on your exploring of the region. And the reason I want to add this in my video is because exploring the region gives you items that will give you more stamina. It's easier to find nucleuses. And if you explore enough of the region, you can get a custom skin for your character. I highly recommend you do this, especially after unlocking your dailies. Throughout the map, you have space rifts that are waiting to be discovered. These space rifts are equivalent to waypoints from Genshin Impact, meaning that this is your way of teleporting throughout the whole map. Another thing that you can teleport to is this Tower of Omnium. This is equivalent to a Statue of the Seven from Genshin Impact, which means once you discover it, it will make the region of the map more visible. One of the most important things on the map, in my opinion, are these white paper looking things. This is going to be one of your main motivations to explore because these paper things contain a pool or a black nucleus. Well, most of the time they are black nucleuses, but 
some of them do give you gold nucleuses and this is going to be your currency for obtaining weapons my personal tip especially for the black nucleuses is just to pull every time you have 10. don't be like me who was pulling every single time they got a chance while playing the beta there is enough on the map so you can accumulate a lot in a very short amount of time so try to be patient with your 10 pulls anyways on the map there's also enemy camps that if highlighted in blue that means there's treasure for you to loot from that camp but if you see a camp that has a bar in the bottom and it's halfway filled that means there's still another treasure left for you to loot there. These symbols right here are your world bosses and raids. They are almost impossible to do alone and should always be done in a group. The last thing on the map I want to pay attention to are these ruins. This is kind of an equivalent to those early domains in Genshin that have puzzles and a boss to defeat. And by doing this, you get rewarded with experience and relics. And these are important because unlocking certain relics allows you to interact with certain environments in the game. And you need to do this in order to acquire nucleuses. And while I am on the topic of nucleuses, let's go ahead and talk about the wishing system. So right off the bat, I want to say that this game is pretty F2P friendly. The Black Nucleus banner is what I like to call the F2P banner. Since Black Nucleuses are the most common ones you find while exploring, that means this banner is going to have the worst rates. There's also no pity on this banner and you are not guaranteed an SR every 10 pulls. Even though this sounds horrible, I do want to say that throughout the beta, I was able to max out some of the F2P weapons with this banner and I did see someone share that they were able to get two SSRs from this banner. Wow, they're so lucky. And I was kind of jealous, honestly. But if you want that luck, make sure you go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the channel for a guaranteed SSR. Moving on to the Gold Nucleus banner, this is like the standard banner from Genshin Impact, except a little better first of all every fresh account gets a guaranteed ssr at wish number 30 and then you get another one at 80. another thing about this banner is that if you get an ssr before reaching that 80 pity it does not reset your pity in the beta after i got my ssr at 30 i was able to get another ssr around the 60s and then i got my guaranteed ssr at 80 so with a little luck you do have a chance to get three ssrs by your 80th wish and right now at the launch of global they're giving an ssr selector so even if you're not lucky so after your 80th wish you will have three ssr weapons and hopefully none of them are copies moving on to the red nucleuses this is the limited banner on this banner it's always a 50 50. kind of sucks but if you have terrible luck after 120 pulls you will have enough tokens to purchase the limited character i think it's better than a worst case scenario in genshin impact where it would take 180 pulls but like always if you're f2p always just count on the worst case scenario happening to you the last type of banner that we have in tower fantasy is the matricy banner this is equivalent to artifacts in genshin but here in tower fantasy you have to gotcha for them and in the pity here on this banner is at 40. kind of sucks but i guess they have to give the whales some type of pay to win in this game because real quickly before i get off on a tangent in pvp weapons are equalized but matrices are not so everyone will be on an even playing field as far as weapons if you have them of course but not everyone's going to have the same matrices so if you don't have a full set or any of the limited time matrices that's where the pay to win aspect comes into play. The last couple of things I want to talk about is the topic of acquiring more copies of the weapons. Unlike Genshin, you can't buy more five star constellations via like a shop or with any other type of currency. But in Tower of Fantasy, once you acquire an SSR weapon, you can farm currency in order to buy more copies of the weapons in the form of star levels. When you acquire an SSR, they start at zero stars and can be maxed out at six stars. Before I give you my last tips, I do want to ask you that if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in any way, I'd appreciate a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more Tower of Fantasy content. I do plan to make more guides, character showcases, and possibly a let's play of my account. Let me know in the comments which type of the three videos you want more so I can make it a priority. Also follow my Twitch for live content and if you have any questions or maybe I left something out, Twitch is a great place to catch me and ask me. You can also acquire rewards while watching me during the global launch of the game. Anyways, thank you if you did any of those three. And let me end with this by saying you should play the story as fast as possible so you can unlock as many tabs and more importantly, your dailies. Unlock your dailies so that way you can get a gold nucleus and three black nucleuses because this is going to be your daily pool thing. Don't get too distracted on exploring like me. Go ahead, unlock everything you got to unlock and then you can explore. And my last advice is just to have fun with the game. Don't get obsessed too much with the meta, unless you like that of course. Just have fun with the weapons and playstyles you enjoy the most. Thank you so much. My name is Harusam. I love y'all and I'll see you in my next video.